one and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade, gracing you yet again with another new album review and throwback album review all in one video, courtesy of my Now and Then feature. The subject of today's Now and Then is multifaceted entertainment personality Seth MacFarlane, and for now, we're talking about his fourth and newest album, Once in a While. Now, I gotta tell you, I love Seth MacFarlane, I'm not gonna lie to you but I am also incredibly jealous of him. Uh, not only does he have an immensely creative mind, he's the mind behind Family Guy and American Dad, the animated sitcoms, as well as the live-action sci-fi series The Orville, which has quickly become one of my favorites of all time, but he's got the most amazingly talented voice. Uh, he's capable of creating a multitude of colorful and inventive character voices, and his singing voice is fantastic. I mean, what can this guy not do, seriously? Now, he has released four albums thus far, as I mentioned, and with his releases, he tends to alternate between entirely or almost entirely upbeat tunes and subdued ballads. Uh, his first and third albums are much more lively and swinging, and his even-numbered rele releases have been more romantic and lush. Now, I have trouble thinking of contemporary talents to compare his voice to. Uh, Michael Bublé has a bit more jazz in his style, uh, and Josh Groban leans more into the classical and opera realm, so they're kind of opposite sides of where Seth MacFarlane kind of sits in the uh, in the spectrum there. Uh, and I can't quite justify placing him up alongside the ranks of Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin and Bing Crosby, not because he isn't as good, but just because of how legendary those singers are. It would be unfair to compare uh, Seth MacFarlane to them. Now, Seth MacFarlane sings in the Great American Songbook style, and what sets him apart from other recent singers who have worked in this in, uh, easy listening genre is that he fills his albums with the more obscure songs from the era, at least as far as the casual listener of that stuff like me is concerned. Uh, I've recognized maybe one or two song titles uh, typically on each of the albums that Seth MacFarlane has put out so far. Now this uh, off the beaten path song choice uh, strategy is a very smart thing to do in my opinion. Not only does it make for a more interesting listen, I mean, you know, we've all heard I Left My Heart in San Francisco, or I've Got You Under My Skin, or The Way You Look Tonight. So even if each singer gives a slightly different interpretation of the song, we know where those songs are going, so to speak. But uh, making these uh, odd, unconventional song choices also helps to minimize comparisons to the artists who made the better known song so popular. You know, if he were to sing My Way, his version would inevitably be measured against Frank Sinatra's. So in taking on the lesser known songs of the 30s and 40s and 50s, he is much more able to make these songs his own. And boy does he do them justice, I'm telling you. Uh, he's got the smoothest, richest baritone of any male vocalist recording today. I mean, I defy you to show me a better singer uh, in that uh, genre than Seth MacFarlane. And uh, his phrasing and delivery are nearly impeccable, and he's got probably the most gorgeous and well-honed vibrato I've heard in a long time, as long as I can remember. And I never hear a note that's unintentionally sharp or flat. I'm like 90% sure, 95% sure that no pitch correction has ever been used on his albums, because I can usually tell when pitch, pitch correction or autotune is used. Now, as for the songs, uh, honestly, every song on here is a treat. But uh, my particular favorites are They Say It's Wonderful and uh, the title track Once in a While, as well as a song called What'll I Do. And What'll I Do is actually the only song on here that I was previously familiar with. And uh, Seth MacFarlane's rendition is a delightful one, absolutely delightful. Uh, the orchestrations are excellent, uh, as far as I can tell. I mean, I don't know much about the finer points of orchestrations and that kind of stuff, so I wouldn't be able to give an informed critique of that, that end of things. But uh, honestly, I can't think of anything to complain about on this album, really, uh, it, with the exception that maybe, you know, I like more upbeat songs, so, you know, that's the only thing, but inclusion of just the, the downbeat or subdued songs fits with, you know, it, it creates a mood for the album, so, you know, honestly, even for that, I can't really uh, deduct any points at all for it. And uh, Now, this is the first album of his to be orchestrated and conducted by Andrew Cote. I hope I pronounced that incorrectly. Uh, as opposed to Joel McNeely, who worked on all three of his previous albums. And not coincidentally, both uh, Joel McNeely and Andrew Cote contribute scores to his show, The Orville. Uh, and the album art is very interesting. Uh, it's by Bill Sinkovich, who's known mostly for his comic book art, uh, but he's also done several album covers, including uh, Bruce Coburn, RZA, and Kid Cudi. But anyway, yeah, it's a great album. Uh, it's, it's great for... Uh, 
relaxing and unwinding in the evenings. Uh, I mean, if you're into this sort of thing, I mean, I'll grant you that not everybody's into this kind of stuff, but uh, for contemporary renderings of great American songbook stuff, you know, songs from the 30s and 40s and 50s, you can't do any better than Seth MacFarlane, honestly. Uh, but anyway, that was now, and this is then. Music is better than words, Seth MacFarlane's debut album from 2011. Now, I'll admit, uh, when I first heard that he was putting out an album, I was skeptical, uh, with him being known back then just for his TV work, in uh, particular just in animated sitcoms, uh, but I should have known, and I may have had a subconscious ingling from his dynamic speaking voice. I mean, he was able to do all those character voices, hilarious character voices. Uh, I should have known that he'd pretty much knock it out of the park in the singing department. Uh, these, songs, these songs are more upbeat, on average, than uh, on Once in a While. So by their nature, they don't quite show off the more subtle nuances of his voice, but I was still pretty well blown away and thoroughly, thoroughly entertained by this album. And again, uh, one of the things that struck me about this album was his off-the-beaten-path choices for songs to sing. Uh, now, entitling the album Music is Better Than Words pretty much drew me in right there, uh, What with my natural attraction towards songs about music, as I, which I've mentioned several times before. And so, of course, the title track, uh, was pretty much destined to be a favorite of mine, which it is. Uh, You're the Cream in My Coffee is another, it's a peppy, catchy number that's really hard not to like. That's another one of my favorites. And the same goes for The Night They Invented Champagne. That's another great one. And The Sadder But Wiser Girl. That's another kind of a, just a, a bouncy, really bouncy, peppy thing. Now, one of the slower songs on the album that's a, a real highlight is Something Good. And it's kind of a, it's got a wistful mood, kind of wistful lyrics, plaintive lyrics. It's really pretty, and uh, it's easy to remember. That's another really good one. Uh, and that was pretty much the only song on the set that I recognized by its title. And there are also a couple of great guest vocalists featured on this album. Uh, Nora Jones appears on Two Sleepy People, and Sarah Bareilles, I love me some Sarah Bareilles, on Love Won't Let You Get Away. So yes, two favorites of mine, so that just gives me one more reason to love this album, honestly. Now, as for which one of the two that I recommend, um, I would probably have to say music is better than words, uh, if only just for my preference of upbeat songs over ballads. Yeah, you know, this has far more upbeat songs. I mean, you know, once in a while pretty much has no upbeat songs. Not that that's a bad thing, as I said. But uh, yeah, music is better than words is definitely an, an album to check out. If you just want something fun and fun to listen to, something that's different. Uh, and yes, this is a niche genre that not everyone will appreciate, as I mentioned before. But if you want a textbook example of it, Seth MacFarlane is the one to turn to. You can't get any better than Seth MacFarlane, in, in my opinion. So yes, thank you so much for joining me on this look at Seth MacFarlane now and then. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I appreciate feedback, whether about this video or anything on my channel, or about music in general. I'd love to hear from you in the comments section below. I invite you to subscribe to my channel as well, and check out my past videos to see what you might have missed. I'm also on Twitter, and you can find a link to my Twitter feed in the description below, so check it out and follow along. Also, please take the time to visit my friends and fellow YouTubers channels, which are also linked to in the description below. They're all great at what they do, and they're very much worth your attention. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.